Tiber Sakelj. Tiber Sakelj, 14 February 1912, 20 September 1988, also known as Sikli Tiber according to Hungarian orthography, was a Hungarian-born polyglot, explorer, author, and citizen of the world. In 1986, he was elected a member of the Academy of Esperanto and an honorary member of the World Esperanto Association. Among his novels, travel books and essays, his novel Cumua, La Philo de la Gangalo Cumuawa, The Son of the Jungle, a children's book about the life of Brazilian Indians, was translated into 17 languages, and in 1987, it was voted best children's book in Japan. In 2011, European Esperanto Union declared 2012 the year of Tibur Sekelj to honor the 100-year anniversary of his birth. Biography Youth 1912-1939 Sekelj's father served as a veterinarian in the Austro-Hungarian army, and as a result the family moved around extensively. Several months after Tibur's birth, the family moved to Sene now in Romania, where Tibur lived until he was ten years old. While Hungarian was his mother tongue, the commonly spoken language was German. Sakelj had at least two sisters and a brother, Antonij, who later collaborated with him on several books. In 1922, the family settled in Kikindo, part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia now in Serbia, where Tibur learned Serbo-Croatian. He also studied French and soon was teaching it to his fellow students. Sakelj went on to learn a new language every four years. In 1926, his family moved to Nixik now in Montenegro, where he took up gym mountaineering and where he walked the entire length of Montenegro. In 1929, he entered the University of Zagreb in Croatia and in 1933 was one of the three youngest students to have graduated from the School of Law. During that time, Tibur also studied painting sculpture, Esperanto, filmmaking, and journalism. But the practice of law bored him, and he turned his attention to writing. He began working as a journalist in Zagreb. In 1937, he started to work in Zagreb as a film screenwriter. In 1982, in Leuven, Belgium, at the World Youth Esperanto Conference, he discussed his Sephardic Jewish ancestry with Neil Blonstein. World Traveler Starting in 1939, Sekelj was a tireless globetrotter, and while he always returned to Serbia in between his many journeys, his need to explore new horizons melded with an insatiable curiosity about people. His travels and expeditions yielded books that have been translated into over 20 languages. South America 1939-1954 In 1939, he left Zagreb for Argentina to write an article on Croat exiles for a Zagreb newspaper, H. Arvatsky Dinevnik. Sakelj was on the ship Teresa on what might have been that ship's last voyage due to the start of World War Roman II. In 1939, the other ships that normally traveled to South America from Rijkofium were being used by Italy due to the war in Africa. Setting sail from then Fium in Italy, he headed for Buenos Aires with stops in Naples, Genoa, Italy, Santos, Brazil, and Montevideo, Uruguay. Tibur reached Buenos Aires on August 19, 1939. A pacifist by nature, Sakelj had anticipated the outbreak of war and so chose to be far from the fighting. This difficult decision was due not to a lack of personal courage. Sakelj was known to display almost foolhardy bravery. Within two years, he had honed his knowledge of Spanish and got work as a journalist, publishing a monthly magazine dedicated. Sakelj remained in Argentina for the next 15 years, writing and exploring South America. 1939-45, Argentina, Aconcagua and Cagua. In 1944, with no prior mountaineering experience, Sakelj joined a crew on an ascent on Aconcagua, the highest mountain 6,962 in the South American continent, led by the Swiss-German mountaineer Georg Link. Sakelj, the Austrian Zechner, and the Italian Bertone reached the summit on February 13, 1944. 
But tragedy loomed. Four of the six men on that climb perished in a snowstorm. This terrible experience inspired Sekeld to write his first book, Storm Over Aconcagua, which recounts the drama in thrilling detail. On a second climb initiated by the Argentinian army, which Tibur led the corpses of the four young men were found and brought home. As a result, Sekeld added a chapter to the second edition of Tempestad Saber, El Aconcagua, 1944, in which he describes that adventure. Then Argentine President Juan Perón personally tried to award Sekeld honorary Argentine citizenship for his actions, along with the Golden Condor, the country's highest medal of honor. Tibur, in his gentle rejection of the offer of citizenship, stated that, while he deeply appreciated the offer, as a citizen of the world, he could not be bound to any one country. 1946-47, Mato Grosso. Based on the success of his first book, Sekeld's publisher urged him to write a second, unrelated one. With a budget of $2,000, Sekeld chose to explore uncharted regions of the Brazilian rainforests in Mato Grosso, otherwise known as the River of Death. In 1946, he undertook first of two expeditions into the Amazon jungle, which produced a popular book, Along Native Trails, Por Tierra de Indios. His partner on this arduous journey was an Argentinian of Russian descent, Mary Riznik, 1914-1996. Together they spent nearly a year exploring tribes along the Araguaia and Rio das Mortes rivers. Along the way they survived contact with the fearsome Zavance Indians, who had killed over a hundred people, in many expeditions before them. They also encountered the Karaja and Javi Indians on this expedition. Eventually the book Por Tierra de Indios, 1946, chronicling survival in difficult circumstances, amid illness and near starvation, met with great success, was reprinted repeatedly and translated into many languages. In 1946, Tibur and Mary married. Together they returned to the Amazon in 1948. After that expedition, he penned Where Civilization Ends, Don Blas Civilization Termina. In the summer of 1946, Tibur traveled through Patagonia with three companions, Sechner, Mary, and Dr. Rosa Skolnik. During the following years, he audited classes at the University of Buenos Aires to attend lectures on anthropology, ethnology, and archaeology, in order to get useful knowledge for his upcoming expeditions. 1948-49, Bolivia, Javaros. In 1948, a failed expedition to find the Javaros led Tibur and Mary to Bolivia, where they met with President Enrique Herzog. He encouraged them to explore the unknown area of the river Aitnez, which abuts with Brazil. During that difficult six-month-long journey, they encountered more hardships and hostile Indians, among them the Tupari, a tribe that only a few years before had been practicing cannibals. In April 1949, President Herzog of Brazil proposed that Sekeld should oversee a territory spanning 100,000 hectares, from the planned 4 million hectares meant to house a million European refugees. Sekeld, rather than having to wait for six months for Parliament to render a decision, turned down the offer. He later regretted the missed opportunity to have a place where Esperanto could become the common language to its populace. 1949-1951 Venezuela After attending the World Congress of Esperanto in UK, Tibur spent seven months in Europe. He returned to South America, joining Mary in Venezuela. For the next 17 months, he wrote newspaper articles while managing a musical instruments store in Maracaibo. After going to Caracas to oversee the creation of a series of historical murals, he began traveling through Central America on his own, as by this time he and Mary, and separated. The couple formally divorced in 1955, and soon after Mary went to the United States, where she remarried. Their son, originally named Diego, after a son of Christopher Columbus, took her second husband's surname. Daniel Rinaldo Bernstein, as of 2011, is a respected acupuncturist and musician living in New York City. 1951-54, Central America. 
Tibber later wrote about being on the island of San Blas in Panama, where he engaged with the Cunha Indians of an attempt to scale the volcano Izalco in El Salvador. That was cut short by a volcanic eruption, and of discovering the ruins of an ancient city in Honduras, which many people knew from legends only, and that was built by Indians. It was during these treks through Guatemala and Honduras that Sakelj became ever more immersed in archaeology and anthropology. Upon Sakelj's arrival in Mexico in 1953, several alpine clubs invited him to take part in their treks. This was not unexpected, given the fact that his book Tempestad Saber el Aconcagua had practically become a manual for mountain climbing. He climbed Papacatapetl, Ixtexihuatl, and many other volcanoes and mountains, further firming up his expertise in that arena. One of many fascinating explorations at that time was the underground crossing of the river San Jeronimo, lying 14 km within the interior of mountain. Subsequent world trips based from Europe 1954-1988. In 1954, Sakelj returned to his home in Belgrade, Yugoslavia. He was given a warm welcome by the local government and its people, as much for his humanitarian message as for his fascinating travelogues. Along with his countless newspaper articles, his books were translated into Serbian, Slovenian, Hungarian, Albanian, and Esperanto. He continued to travel and write of his experiences. 1956-57, India, China, Nepal. In 1956, he drove through Asia as a World Esperanto Association UEA observer to an upcoming UNESCO. When his car crashed in Tehran, he continued on by bus and rail. During that journey, he met extensively with Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and his daughter, future Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. He also befriended the future president, Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan. In the Yugoslav embassy, he met with Lyubomir Vukotic, then president of the World Federation of the Deaf, when Vukotic met with Indian and Chinese representatives to open an Asian office. Seklelj acted as interpreter, bridging a communication gap between not hearing people of different languages. In January 1957, he accompanied Vukotic to China, which at the time was not accepting visitors. This was followed by a six-month stay on the invitation of King Mahendra of Nepal, another country that was, at that time, hostile to foreigners. King Mahendra personally thanked Sakelj for founding the First People's University and for helping to spread the teaching of Esperanto. This friendship is in part the subject of Tibur's book, Nepal Opens the Door, 1959, which he first wrote in Esperanto while in Madras studying yoga philosophy. The book was translated into multiple languages, including English, Spanish, Serbian, and Slovenian. His journey through India, on foot and by bus, led Tibur from village to village, and from temple to temple, culminating in a month-long stay in a cave with three yajin. 1958-60, Benoba Bave, Japan, Sri Lanka Cook. After spending six months in Europe, Sakelj again flew to India, this time to teach Esperanto to the great Indian mystic, Vinoba Bave. The Hindu scholar mastered Esperanto within a month. Sakelj remained in India for five months before landing, penniless, in Japan. In March 1960, he set off on a four month tour across 30 cities in Japan, always welcome at the home of Esperantists there. Between lecturing and writing newspaper articles, Sakelj earned enough money to buy an airplane ticket. 1961-63, Morocco, Caravan of Friendship in Africa. In 1961, Sakelj accepted the invitation of Moroccan Esperantists and traveled to Morocco, where he joined a caravan of Tuaregs nomads into the Sahara. In March 1962, Tibur set off for Africa on a caravano de amico caravan of friendship with eight people from four countries in two all-terrain cars. With a goal of direct communication between people, this year-long journey reached Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, and Tanzania. When a second caravan meant for other African countries failed to materialize, Tibur climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, 
the highest peak in Africa. This trip is the theme of his book Gambo Rafiki. Although he wrote the book in Esperanto, it first appeared in Slovene. 1965-66, Russia, Japan, Mongolia, Europe. In 1965, on his way to the World Congress of Esperanto in Tokyo, Tibur traveled by train across Russia, Moscow, and Siberia, Irkutsk, and Khabarovsk to Nahadka, before landing in Yokohama by boat. A month later, Tibur crossed Siberia by train with a side trip to Mongolia. Given the antipathy to foreigners there, his three-month stay was difficult, despite having a stamped visa and correct documents. In ensuing years, Tibur Sekelj managed to visit every European country, with the exception of Albania and Iceland. 1970, Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea, New Guinea, New Guinea. In 1970, Yugoslav television sent Sekelj to Australia, New Zealand, and New Guinea. During his six-month stay, he climbed Mount Kosciuszko in New Guinea. He met with natives whose lack of previous contact with the civilized world led to tense situations. But among Sekeld's many skills, and perhaps luck was just another one, was an uncanny ability to escape imminent danger time and again. Certainly he adapted easily to odd customs including bizarre food, but if there was a single thing in particular that helped in this regard, it was his communication skills, which transcended even his facility with language. 1972-1980, North America, Russia, Uzbekistan, Nigeria, Ecuador, or, or, Ecuador, or, or, Ecuador, or. In 1972, while at the International Congress of Ethnologists in Chicago, Tibur visited Eastern Canada and United States. In 1977, during the same event in Leningrad, he saw Uzbekistan and Central Asia. That same year, he took part in a festival celebrating the culture of former slaves in Lagos, Nigeria. In 1978, during an assignment for Yugoslav TV, he returned to South America, where he visited Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands. What amazed many was how this tireless traveler always got funding for his travels. He famously attributed this ability to the fact that he did the work of seven writer, cameraman, assistant, photographer, and buyer and shipper of ethnographic artifacts. While each of these jobs is usually delegated to others, Sakeld was a one-man crew. Of course, one could have added a man to that list. Whenever it was possible, Tibur would wrangle advertising contracts from airlines in exchange for discounted tickets. Work for Esperanto Sakeld devoted much of his life to the defense and promotion of Esperanto. A committee member of UEA since 1946, he sought for over 30 years, with a brief break while skirmishing with Ivo Leipna over its activity within the Instituto por Oficialigo de Esperanto IOE to be part of all the Universal Esperanto Congresses. And as a representative of the IDU, the International Committee for Ethnographic Museums, he took part in numerous conferences. Sekeld's polyglot abilities often assured that he alone could understand all of the multinational speakers there. In 1983, he co-founded Eva Esperantist Writers Association and was its first president. In 1986, he was elected to be a member of the Academy of Esperanto. He took every opportunity to advocate for Esperanto, particularly in the International Writers Association PN and at UNESCO. In 1985, 1972-1988, Director of Museum in Sabata In 1972, he took a four-year job as head curator of the Municipal Museum in Sabata Serbia Vojvodina. In the later 1970s, he took advanced studies in museology in Zagreb University leading to a doctorate in 1976. His innovative ideas and projects found little support and Sakeld quit his job almost immediately. He attended the World Congress of Ethnographers in Chicago in the United States and the World Congress of Museum Professionals in Copenhagen. Upon his election to secretary of the International Committee of Museologists, he took on various initiatives for new kinds of museums with dioramas. 
In 1985, Sekeld met a young woman, Ursebet Sekeld, a librarian, born in 1958, whom he met on a journey through Hungary. That year she learned Esperanto. Sekeld and Ursebet married in 1987 in Osage. Together they visited three World Congresses of Esperanto. Ursebet Sekeld participated in the drafting of the Vojvodina organ Vilo. They jointly wanted to compile an Esperanto Serbo Croatian dictionary, which was never completed due to the death of Tibur. Tibur lived in Sabatica from 1972 until his death, September 20, 1988. He is buried in Bajsko Grobz Bajas Cemetery in Sabatica with the highest honors from the city of Sabatica. On his grave, under bronze bas relief, one can read that inscription in Esperanto. Writer, traveler, 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 Tibur Sekeld, 1912-1988, Burkisto, Monvigiganto, Skills, Tibur Sekeld was adroit at a wide range of skills, Journalist, explorer, adventurer, mountaineer, writer, drawer, filmmaker, geographer, ethnologist, museologist, polyglot, and actor on the political stage, relating to politicians including aforementioned heads of state, his defense and promotion of Esperanto at UNESCO, and mainly the UEA. The connecting thread in this man's worldview was a consistent access to peoples from around the world. Geographer Traveling certainly helped make him a geographer, but he also was forced to become a true cartographer during his travels. In that regard, he researched and designed charts of several previously uncharted parts of South America, especially in Bolivia and Brazil. As a result, a river was named after him, Rio Tiber. He published word maps in Esperanto and edited a professional review, Geographia, review between 1956 and 1964. In 1950, he became a member of Guatemala Society about history and geography and, because of his merits in this area, in 1946, the Royal Geographical Society of United Kingdom accepted him as an FRGS. Journalist, list, 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 filmmaker, Tibur's first job after getting his degree in Zagreb was with a film company, Marker Film. The company sent him to learn film production in Prague, where he studied under a famous Czech director, Atakar Vavra, where, for six months, Tibur studied film direction. Once Sekeld returned to Yugoslavia in the 1960s, he began getting TV coverage as a journalist. And because his forays into unknown areas required more than just pictures, they required film Tibur accepted the challenge. He began using his knowledge as a filmmaker, not only directing himself but also using sound and light, camera work and more on his trips to New Guinea and Australia. For Zagreb Television, he filmed a series of films about those regions and their natives that became a 10-hour long travel film series seen across Yugoslavia. Amazingly, he did everything on those films alone. In the later part of the 1970s, he made films about Colombia and Ecuador where he used a professional team of filmmakers from Novi Sad Television, which promoted his travel films. He himself was the subject of many interviews, chiefly within former Yugoslav televisions. A large majority of that material has been preserved. One example is an in-depth two-hour interview with TV journalist Hetrich. Mountaineer in Argentina, he learned about mountaineering with barely enough time to prepare before taking part in an expedition to Aconcagua. Still, he was able to survive the climb up that treacherous mountain. Later on, he climbed a number of very dangerous mountains, and on all the continents, between the mountains of Nepal, Mexico, and Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, and Mount Kosciusko in Australia. His detailed description of the ascent on Aconcagua in a book in Spanish became a sort of textbook for mountaineering in Mexico and other countries across South America. Ethnologist, technologist. During his travels, he became a collector of native masks, 
hats and musical instruments, along with spoken native poetry. Concerning the latter, he published the book El Pafu La Sagan, that appeared in Serbo-Croatian and Esperanto. He donated his tangible collection of masks, instruments, and hats to Ethnographic Museum in Zagreb and to Municipal Museum of Sabatica, where most of them were later given to the Museum of Centre Serbia. Adventurer Although his goal was never to impress others, the most attractive aspect of Tibur Sekeld's life in the eyes of the public, especially to the non-Esperantist, was unarguably his adventurous side. Perhaps it was his ceaseless search to locate the essence of human spirit that led him to remote parts of the earth. Across a span of over forty years he studied, and engaged with tribes from the rainforests of Brazil and New Guinea, always learning and annotating the customs, lifestyles, and philosophies of then unknown peoples in Asia and Africa. Many times he befriended people otherwise hostile to the white man, and often risking his life in the process. He writes erudically about this in his book in Esperanto Mondo de Travavejaj, The World of Experiences, 1981. Political Militant among Sakeld's many skills was an ability to create an instant sense of ease between himself and politicians and men in power. A score of heads of state welcomed him into their circle, and in turn he gave them useful advice based on his travels through their territories. During his life he met with various heads of state, from Juan Perón, Argentinian president, he received in 1946 an award, the Golden Condor, along with an offer of Argentinian citizenship due to his bravery on Aconcagua. He met with and became a friend of Jawaharlal Nehru, Indian Prime Minister, and his daughter Indiri Gandhi, future Indian Prime Minister, and with Radhakrishnan, future Indian President. Bolivia President Enrique Herzog sent him to do research in uncharted regions of Bolivia in 1948, and in 1949 asked him to manage Bolivian territory for European refugees after World War Roman II, offering 100.0 hectares for him to do that. Tibur asked for four million, but was told it would take half a year for the Bolivian Parliament to ratify that. He chose not to wait and left before ratification could take place. Also, he met with King Mahendra of Nepal, who thanked Tibur Sekelj for creating the first People's University there, where he taught Esperanto. The peak of his political activity was in 1985, when he took over the UEA in order to prepare the second resolution of UNESCO on Esperanto. He met with numerous heads of state, ministers and diplomats during his four participations in UNESCO talks throughout 1984 and 1985. He finally succeeded in convincing the Yugoslavian government to offer that resolution to the assembly of UNESCO in Sofia, while getting other Esperantists to work on the governments of China, Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, San Marino, and Costa Rica, in order to back the resolution. Over the next months he visited the embassies of seven of those countries, finally succeeding in convincing them that they should work with their governments and accept the resolution. In Sofia he negotiated between the delegations of numerous countries to vote on the resolution, which in the end was accepted. To all of this we can also add the few months he spent living with the Indian philosopher and political activist Vinoba Bave, not to mention many, many heads of smaller regions and cities and states across the world. Polyglot Sakelj learned 25 languages and countless dialects, of which he retained nine at the end of his life, Hungarian, Serbian, German, Esperanto, Italian, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese. Of these he wrote extensively in Spanish, Esperanto, and the Serbo-Croatian. He was an interpreter on his travels and as part of his work for PIF during acceptances, arrangements, etc. I learned around 25 of languages. Many of them I forgot, because I stopped using them. I still can use some nine languages, and although that's not enough to get by in the entire world, I can communicate with almost anyone despite that. Esperantist, dist, parentist, parentist. After becoming an Esperantist in Zagreb in 1930, 
Sekelt remained committed to the ideals of the international language throughout his life. His contributions to the language are immense. Sekelt founded ten Esperanto associations in South America and Asia, and Esperanto societies in 50 of cities across the world. For over 20 years, Sekelt was a committee member of UEA, and he was single-handedly responsible for the second resolution where UNESCO positively addressed Esperanto in 1985. One-third of his books were originally written in Esperanto. He wrote a great many lucid and cogent articles for various Esperanto newspapers and magazines, and he drafted Geografia Review of Gazito and Vilo. But his intense activity in the name of Esperanto related to his foundation and guide of International Institute for Officialization of Esperanto, Iowa, that launched the motto Better Practice Than 100 Hours Sermon-like. In that sense, he especially engaged in diverse travel, organizing bus caravans that traveled across the world, having its greatest impact at the start of the International Puppet Theater Festival PIF in Zagreb and later at the Foundation for Internasi Culture, Servo International Cultural Service. PIF still exists, currently after 44 years, and still distributes an annual prize Tibur Sekelj for the most humanitarian message. His very intensive activity in the name of IOE had a strong effect on the classical neutral Esperanto movement in the practical application, on the one hand in terms of culture and tourism, and on the other to a more elastic conception of impartiality that followed Tijo. His motto for success, three things are essential for success, precisely define your goal, move steadily toward it, and persist until you have reached it. Teacher he influenced the teaching of Esperanto and was behind the launching of the first televised course in Esperanto in China. In the 1980s, he wrote textbooks. The authors were A and T, Sekeld and Klaus Alexander, and Navek Kalman did the illustrations. The course existed also in form of transparencies, actually move as one can project. He led many master Esperanto classes wherever he traveled, and also took part in the improvement of the Zagreb method textbook. Tibur Sekelj gave between 7,000 and 8,000 speeches, most often with photos of his travels, wrote innumerable articles about Esperanto in the national press, and was interviewed hundreds of times for national radios, newspapers, and television. He always spoke about Esperanto. Worldview, worldview, Wherever he was in his lectures and activities, he conveyed to his audience his simple philosophy of life. Man, as an individual, is the most precious thing in his own environment, regardless of descent or education. This is most clearly expressed in his work, Kumua. Man, as a cultural capital, is the product of all humanity, because in our daily lives we interact with products invented by diverse people. He illustrated this with a dining table, explaining that each piece of tableware was invented by a different people, each of the foods that had been developed and planted by different people, and now ten cultures are involved in sex. Therefore, every man was a respectable person, and what we have today is the result of efforts of all nations, and therefore belongs to all. Artist Aside from being an adept writer, Sekeld studied painting and sculptor while still a student in Zagreb. When he first landed in Argentina, he survived doing portraits and later he often illustrated his own books. Writer Tibur is perhaps the most well-known original Esperanto writers among the non-Esperantist world, given the number of his translated books from Esperanto. The most successful his work, Cumual, the Son of Jungle has been translated multiple times, while others' books have between two and ten translations. Writing in Esperanto, Spanish and Serbo-Croatian, he produced some thirty works of travel writing, novels, stories, and poetry. The most successful of his books is Cumual of the Son of Jungle, originally written in Esperanto, translated into twenty-two languages. In 1983, the Japanese Ministry for Education proclaimed in 1983 
as one from the four best juvenile literature published in Japan. As a result, it appeared in Japanese in 300.0 copies, probably the largest printing from an Esperanto-based document. In total, over a million copies of Kumiwawa were printed throughout the world. Tempest Above Aconcagua was a book that appealed across generations and to all parts of the world. His stories won prizes of Belartage Concursage, and his poetry, although sparse, is considered valuable and worth studying. Works The works of Tibur Sekelj novels and recordings of his travels contain interesting ethnographic observations. He also wrote guides and essays on Esperanto, the international language. The majority of his books were originally written in Esperanto, but were translated into many national languages. Tibur Sekelj is undoubtedly the most often translated Esperanto author. Descriptions of Travels Tempestad Saber, El Aconcagua novel about his expedition in the Argentinian Massif of the Aconcagua, originally written in Spanish, Buenos Aires, Editions Pucer, 1944, 274 pages. Aluja na Aconcagui I got a new Dana Kasnij, Serbo-Croatian translation by Ivo Veserina, Zagreb, 1955, 183 pages. Burka na Akinkagui, Czech Slovakian translation by Eduard V. T. Verozik, Martin, Osveta, 1958, 149 pages. Tempesto Super Akinkago, translation in Esperanto by Ennio Hugo Garot, Belgrade, Serbio Esperanto Ligo, 1959, 227 pages. Por Teres de Indios, about the experiences of the author under the Indians in Brazil, originally written in Spanish, 1946. Dirch Brasilians or Walder Zoo Wild and Indian or Stammen, German translation by Rodolfo Simon, Zurich Oral Fussley, 1950, 210 pages. Prailsley Brasley, T-Czech translation by Matilda V. Husarova, Martin, Osveta, 1956. 161 pages. E. Desili Indigensev po Brezelski Rika Gazdavi, Slovenian translation by Peter Kavasik, Maribor, Zalosbo Zorja Maribor, 1966, 252 pages. Fralando de Indianaj, translation in Esperanto by Ernesto Sonnenfeld, Malmo Eldona, Societo Esperanto, 1970, 186 pages. Excursion a los indios del Araguaia Brasil, about the Indians Caraja and Javi in Brazil, in Spanish, 1948. Nepolo Malfirm is La Porden, originally written in Esperanto. La Lagana, Regulo, 1959, 212 pages. Nepla Advara Virata, Serbian translation by Antonij Sekelj, Belgrade, 1959, 212 pages. Window on Nepal, English translation by Marjorie Balton, London, Robert Hale, 1959, 190 pages. Nepal on Pira Virat, Slovenian translation by Boris Grabnar, Ljubljana, Mladenska Kane Giga, 1960, 212 pages. Gambo Rafiki, La Caravano de Amico Tra Africo, originally written in Esperanto. Pies, Edistudio, 1991, 173 pages, ISBN 88 minus 7036 minus 41 minus 5. Jambo Rafiki. Cut Caravane Prijate Lust, Apo Afriki, Slovenian translation, by Tita Skrld Sajar, Ljubljana and Ladin Skakayan Giga, 1965, 184 pages. Redu per Esperanto, Zagreb, 1973. 55 pages. Premiataj Kajaliaj Novelaj, seven short novels originally written in Esperanto, Zagreb Internacia Cultura Servo, 1974, 52 pages. Cumua, La Filo de la Gangalo, children's book about the life of Indians in Brazil, originally written in Esperanto. First edition Antwerp, 1979. Second edition Rotterdam, you are 1994, 94 pages. Cumua Jungle's Son, 
Swedish translation by Leif Norden Stormboden, 1987, 68 pages. Kumavava as Osudofia, Hungarian translation by Ispen Ertel, Budapest, 1988. Kumavava, Singun Iv, Ukrainian translation by Nadija Hordajko Andrianova. Kumavava, Sinprasum, Serbian translation, 2003. Kumual Ivan Ilgungla, Maltese translation by Carmel Malia, Rabat 2010. Mondo de Travivajaj, Autobiography and Adventures Throughout Five Continents. Pies, Edi Studio, Juana Eldono 1981, Tua Eldono 1990, 284 pages, ISBN 88 minus 7036 minus 12 minus 1. Meg Homo Story, About the Life During an Ascension Vienna, Pro Esperanto 1988, 20 pages. Coltanto de Silarkaj, Novels and Poems Originally Written in Esperanto, Pies at a Studio, 1992, 117 pages. ISBN 88 minus 7036 minus 520. Temugino, La Filo de la Stipo, Novel for the Young, translated from Serbian by Teresa Capista, Belgrade, 1993, 68 pages. ISBN 86 minus 901073 minus 4 minus 7. Books about Esperanto. La Importancia del Idioma Internacional en la Educación para Un Mundo Major, Mexico, Mexica Esperanto Federacio, 1953, 13 pages. The International Language Esperanto, Common Language for Africa, Common Language for the World, translated from Esperanto to English by John Christopher Wells, Rotterdam, U.O. 1962, 11 pages. La problem linguistico same du movement des pays non alines at la possibilite de la Rotterdam, U.O. 1981, 16 pages equals Esperanto documentage 10. La lingua problemo de la movado de nilian citage, landage kejjaya et la salvo. Rotterdam, U.A. 1981, 12 pages equals Esperanto documentage 13. Manuals of Esperanto, La Travita Felico, Novel for Children, Buenos Aires, Progreso, 1945, with Antonij Sikelj, Curso de Esperanto, La Orbita Structura Metodo, 1960, 48 pages, with Antonij Sikelj, De Pisni Tekaj Esperanto, Belgrade, Serva Esperanto Ligo, 1960, 63 pages. Works of Ethnography, Works of Ethnography, Ethnography. During his travels in South America, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, he collected important ethnographic information, which he gave to the Ethnographic Museum of Zagreb. His principal ethnographic work is El Pafu La Sagan. El Labu Supposio de la Mondo Pull Out the Arrow, about oral poetry of the world, Rotor de Mo, U.A. 1983, 187 Pagaj, ISBN 92 minus 9017-25-5 5 equals Serio Oriento Occidento 18, where he presents translations of record. Dictionary Tibur Sakeld collaborated on a dictionary in 20 languages about museology. Dictionarium Museologicum, appearing in 1986. ISBN 963-571-174-3. Notes and references.